now we come to another interesting interesting relation between the volume and the volume and the temperature now we had said there was mass there was volume there was pressure and there is temperature now if i want a relationship between the volume and the temperature then i'll have to keep the other two as constant so they are constant and these two change okay change now so out of them the the mass and pressure should be constant that means the same amount of gas that you have taken you should enclose it in a in a closed container and and there is a way in which you can keep the pressure the same that we'll we'll see and and there is a very interesting thing about it that this whole 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 thing came into being because charles jakes charles he was studying the he was studying things about the hot air balloon okay so so you must have seen uh, you increase the temperature so so what happens it starts flying and if you want to land then you reduce the temperature if the fuel is not there you cannot you cannot increase the you cannot increase the uh, the the heat heat input then there are some sandbags that you start throwing and that's how you gain height maybe maybe to avoid a water stream or maybe some trees or maybe maybe some electric lines because that that could be fatal so that's an emerg so that's an emergency kind of thing that is built into the into the into the system now while while doing that experiment they came to a very strange kind of conclusion that for every degree centigrade centigrade rise in temperature rise in temperature the volume the volume rises by 1 upon 273.15 of the original volume you get the point that for every degree centigrade rise in temperature the volume increases by increases by 1 upon 273.1 one times the original volume this is the change okay this is the change in the volume okay fine so let us say let the volume at at 0 degree centigrade b v not okay and at t degree centigrade and at t degree centigrade b v subscript t b v t okay so what happens in 1 degree centigrade the change is the change is 1 upon 273.15 v not so if i increase it by 1 degree it becomes v not plus 
upon 273.15 into V naught, correct? So if I, I should write in 1 degree centigrade increase. So in T degree centigrade increase, the change is how much? T times that, no? 2 degree it will be twice that, 3 degree it will be thrice that. So for T degrees it will be T times that. So T upon 273.15 V naught. Okay. This is the change. Thus, thus, the change in volume is equal to T upon 273.15 V naught. And what is the change in volume? Vt minus V naught. Is it not? T upon 273.15 into V naught. Now that must be some observation that they, that they did. Is it not? Otherwise, it is difficult to come to this kind of conclusion. Okay. So, so what happens? It says in a sense that Vt is equal to V naught plus T upon 273.15 V naught. And if I take out V naught or maybe, maybe here, then it becomes 1 plus T upon 273.15. Okay. Now that gives me 273.15 plus T divided by 273.15. 1, 5 into V naught. Hmm? Now what he did, what Charles did, he defined another, another temperature, right? Say T plus, this is, this is T degrees, right? When you mean degree, you write like that. You put that degree. The same thing as you do in angle. So if you put say 30 degree, it means it is 30 degrees. If you write this, it means 30 radian. Okay. So, so, so if you write degree, then it is centigrade. If you don't, it is not radian in temperature. It is not radian in temperature. Hmm? So, so we defined, he defined something else. He said, let there be another scale. A new scale was defined where a new scale was defined where T is equal to T degree plus 273.15 whatever value you have in degree you you sum it up. Kelvin. Okay, and, and you will find that this is the faint indication towards the Kelvin scale. Fine. This is the indication towards the Kelvin scale, which, which carries the name of Kelvin, but, but which initiated here. Okay. Which got initiated here. So the moment I do that, 
then T naught becomes 0 degree plus 270 plus 273.15 which is equal to 273.15 okay Because it was he who actually interpreted many more things that you will understand as, as I go ahead. Okay. So, so this is this is what is the Kelvin temperature scale or or thermodynamic scale or this is thermodynamic dynamic scale okay fine <coughs> absolute temperature scale on that that we'll understand why absolute also absolute temperature scale okay now if that is the case then what does this become Bt is equal to T upon T naught into V naught. Is it not? So, so somehow it becomes Vt upon upon V naught is equal to T upon T naught. Is it not? Now, now see, I, I can make it this. I, I take all the references from 0. Okay? Let the volume at temperature T1 be V1 and at T2 B V2. So what does it mean? It means that V1 upon V T is equal to T upon T T1 upon upon T naught and, and V2 upon V T is equal to T2 upon T naught. Now what does that mean? What does that mean? It means that V1 upon T1 is equal to, is equal to, sorry, this is V0, sorry, is equal to, is equal to V0 upon T0 and V2 upon T2 is equal to V0 upon T0 here, right? So what happens? If you see the right hand sides, I can definitely equate the right hand, uh, left hand sides. It implies that v1 upon t1 is equal to v2 upon t2 and it implies that v1 upon v2 is equal to t1 upon t2 is it not so it somehow tells me what that v is directly proportional to t that v is directly proportional to T. And it obviously means that V is 
equal to k to t it also means that is it not so v2 is equal to k to t now this unit of k2 hmm, the this unit is determined by is determined by the pressure the mass the pressure the mass of the gas the pressure of the gas the mass of the gas and units of these quantities so maybe you you take pressure in bar and and volume uh, and say mass in mole then it is something else and you take it in atmosphere and kg then it becomes something else and that's how it changes right but this holds good fine It depends on pressure and the mass and, and units of of the quantity. Suppose you, you take volume in liters and T in Kelvin, then it is something else. You take volume in meter cube and pressure in atmosphere and so it keeps on changing. No? There are at least 20, 30 units that you will come across. Numerical value. Hmm? Numerical value, but different values for all units. No, 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 no. Numerical is that standard, no? So this is meter cube, this is Kelvin and that's how it goes. Hold on, hold on, don't worry. So, you'll understand it better when you go to the gas equation actually. So, so hold on. So, so what happens? Now, I'm in a position to plot these two. I have kept my pressure as constant. Okay? So, so what does Charles' law become actually in words? Charles' law becomes... Charles law becomes at a given pressure at a given pressure the at a, the the given mass of at a given pressure for a given mass of a gas the volume is directly proportional to the temperature proportional to the temperature in Kelvin scale Kelvin scale. Why not go with the already defined scale and make another scale for Kelvin? Why? Because uh, then it will not be directly proportional to T degrees. Just try to see. If you are at 20 degrees and you increase your temperature to 40 degrees, your, your volume does not become double. Does it? It does not. So, so for, for centigrade, it will not be a double thing. No? So, that's why he is saying it is directly proportional to K. It is not directly proportional to T. This you have to understand. That means if you are at 20 degree centigrade, which translates to? To? 293 or, or say you are at 27 and roughly I say it is 273 then suppose then then you are at 300 what if you double your temperature in degree Celsius you become only 54 okay so that becomes only 327 
So you do not even expect that the volume will get doubled. It will hardly, if, if at all, uh, it will hardly increase, right, by, by some, from 300 your temperature has gone to 327, that is a 9% increase, right. So, so the volume will go up by 9%, that is all. Understand? It is directly proportional to the Kelvin scale and cannot be directly proportional to the degree Celsius. Now, now let me kind of show you what, what it means. Okay, so, so you must have done this, right? This part you must have done. And so, so I will clear the space. So what is happening? There should be a way for you to keep the mass constant and that is obtained by nothing but that is that is obtained by nothing but but keeping the keeping so let us take a sealed container how do i keep the mass constant what i am trying to show you is what i am trying to show you is what 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 is the impact of it so i take a sealed container and and what do i expect from a sealed container to to, to not to leak any 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 gas so so no ingress of gas and no egress of gas right so so the the gas mass is constant i want to keep the pressure constant what do i do either i leave it like that so what happens the the atmospheric pressure which is constant that keeps on acting at all times and that multiplied by the area of it is equal to the force right so 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 you you don't worry about that so that constant force acts on the given area that divided by so so the atmospheric pressure keeps on acting so what does it mean as long as if they are the, if this is not moving up or down it means the pressure here and pressure here are the same so by this very simple thing i have been able to keep the pressure and mass constant okay a uh, uh, a watertight air sealed this thing uh, container and and leave or you maybe want to increase the pressure so put something over it say a uh, 5 kg mass it will it will add more it will make it whatever is atmospheric pressure plus plus 50 newton divided by divided by the area that will be the pressure so pressure remains constant so you might decide to put weights over it so so let us say but but once you have fixed the weights you have put the weights you do not change it It will not. Hold on. This is a movable thing. Now what happens? You heat it. So there is some temperature here. If you heat it, say what happens? So the moment you start heating this, what will happen if I heat it, then the, then the pressure will increase. If the pressure here increases, it will push it up, unbalanced force, till what happens, till the pressures again balance. So, so for this movable piston system, the pressure is always always the same so so the moment it is balanced and it has reached a steady state you can pretty well be be assured that these are two these two are at constant pressures with with all the weights that it had Get the point. That is a simple way of keeping the pressure the same. Okay. Now, there is a very simple relationship that, that your, if, if this is V2, this was V1, if the temperature was T1, this temperature was T2. So, V2 upon V1 is equal to T2 upon T1. That is, that is, Oh, that is the only thing that is that is there to it. So maybe 
I, I'm not saying you start heating it here. The heat is here, right? So it's something like that. You reduce the heat, it'll come back. Hmm? We understand. This is a simple, simple thing that can be made even at home to show that there is a change in, in the volume. I'll not be able to. Why? Why not? What do you mean? What? Huh? The the container that does not leak. Air tight, air tight uh, syringe, and you dip it in boiling water. What? Hmm? You need not burn it always. Put it in a hot water bath. It will be a good approximation to whatever I am telling, right? And you can actually do this experiment. This is this is nothing um, chaotic. Okay, so so maybe if if you put it in boiling water, that's a good reference point because if the water is boiling, you know that it's at two, uh, it's at hundred degrees centigrade, three seven three, and and you could take it at the room temperature, okay, and it will tell you how much it goes up. But one thing is for sure that the pressure remains constant where this remains equal to the atmospheric pressure, right? Fine. Okay. Now we go on to, on to the graphs of graphs of this. 